भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम शांति 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 हरिओम As we just talked in the last discourse, the human life is divided into four stages. The first stage being the Brahmacharya Ashram or student's life, second being family life. Then once our family desires and responsibilities are over, which is expected around age of 50, so we then think about our further goal is to advance towards our ultimate goal, what we call one prasasam or a retired life. Usually uh, people would then be going into not necessarily forest, but uh, in a place where they will be more at peace, uh, less noise and less uh, attention to the family life because that is all over. They have handed over their responsibility to their uh, sons or daughters who are now grown up, responsible, and they do not want to stay with the family because the attachment of the family then does not allow us to focus, concentrate our energies towards uh, our ultimate goal of God. So then the third stage between age of 50 to 75 is to simplify, to reduce our unwarranted needs, and to find an association or people of similar nature so that we can have more devotion towards God, more opportunity to think, talk, and discuss with uh, people of similar age. That is why in our ancient time it was recommended that we withdraw from the family life as much as possible and uh, have a new life in the forest or in the ashrams or special places that is provided for people who, where they can uh, read and dedicate their, their time and energy towards God. I think that it is very necessary that we keep ourselves and our interest according to our age. So the third then ashram, which is a retirement, we should have planned this early so we don't have problems. Nowadays when we don't plan, we continue our family life throughout the uh, old age also. And this is something between poor teaching in the young age, poor planning during our family life, because if we don't gamble with our life and um, appropriately live the disciplined life, then I think that life will be much simpler, easier, and with less anxiety, and we will be able to fulfill the goal. There will be less rituals during this third stage because you are not supposed to be having a lot of resources or funds. You have used up all that into in your family life, but you need enough of your food and clothes. That much support we have to plan ourselves, but then the most of the other energy is spent in uh, uh, realizing that now we should be thinking and meditating more on God. We should not be spending too much uh, time on petty desires, but we find that even nowadays between age of 50 and 75, people are more worried about families, their income, uh, because they haven't planned properly. Sometimes we lose our uh, savings because we don't uh, understand the uncertainty of life. And uh, that is why if we have been taught properly, and we live according to this uh, disciplined life, we would have no unexpected problems, we would have more secure security, and no anxiety, so that we will be able to think about God. And ultimately, after 75, if we are fortunate enough to live longer, then certainly we will have to be spending more time alone, or with very few people who are of similar nature, and uh, put all our efforts just like a running race in which the runner puts all his energies in his last lap. So we should also then consider that my final age and few years left, I want to run and do the best I can. That means I would be spending much more time in uh, doing meditation, service, uh, thinking about God and much less about families and other 
unwarranted uh, uh, anxieties and burden. So our ancestors then had a very good vision in helping us to plan our life into four quarters. Sometimes we go backward and forward. We go to school at age of 50 when we are not able to even remember much. So it is better that we go gradually than we have to go back and forth. There is no harm in learning because whole life is learning process. But when it is a young age, we should be focusing because we have good memory. We focus on our studies. In the middle age, we have other energies and aspirations. We focus on our family life. As we grow older, we focus more on God and less on the other things which we are not even qualified or we may not have even energy to do. So it is good to follow the natural laws as we grow older. We don't want to reverse this uh, uh, gradation, but we have to always advance. Uh, this is something that uh, after at least 2,000 years of experience our sages have recommended. Uh, we hope we can learn from something. We try to apply today in our present day situation. It is not wise to say that, well, this is an ancient uh, law and it doesn't apply. I think that if we want to be happy, if we want to be wise, th uh, then we are trying to do good to ourselves if we write off uh, the wisdom of the past, we are unfortunately writing off our own good. I think that our whole idea is to help you or help ourselves to get the best out of life. Every time we want to buy something, we always think buying the best for our money. Our life has been very valuable, very precious, and uh, we even don't know how much uh, pain we have gone through to come to this human life. And we certainly don't want to trade our human life and get deceived. So whatever we are saying is for our good, but this thing can be taken off more advantage if we have faith, if we have good sanskar. There is no question of arguing because this is an experienced knowledge. We don't want to waste time. If you don't feel that you don't want to do it, it is just your own opinion and choice. I don't think that in path of uh, spirituality there should be any force on anyone. Uh, we all learn from experience. If we don't learn from lectures or books or our parents or from the teachers, we certainly are going to learn from our own experience. But sometimes because uh, the experience may cause us a lot of accidents, uh, we want to help prevent as much as possible waste of energy, time and money so that you get the best out of your life and that is the purpose. So we should have the attitude that everything that our ancestors are saying or the scriptures are teaching us is for our good and uh, that is really the truth. Because in spirituality there is no uh, private agenda or a bottom line or trying to get something uh, as a trade. This is simply a, a profession of love if you want to call it a profession. It is like a love between mother and child. Mother should not expect anything from child except to raise the child out of love, and the love that she receives itself is his own payment. So in spirituality, if we do things lovingly, uh, honestly, then we will get a joy of doing that, and that itself is the reward, so that we don't have to feel frustrated later on that somebody did not appreciate or somebody didn't give you something, even if your own son or wife because our reward should be within our own capacity and our control, and that means if we do the best according to the principle, that itself will give us the joy and reward. Reward is already built in the doing things, in performing our duties lovingly. But as, as soon as we have expectations, then there are frustrations, we give control to somebody else, uh, whether they are our wife or children or society or money or name and fame, we have given control to others. And that is where we lose out and sometimes we feel frustrated. But if we keep our life under our own control, then I think that you have very little chance to feel frustrated. And all our efforts and teachings is to give you the command of your life, but not in a sense that we will, just because we are in charge, we can behave any way we want. 
discipline is absolutely necessary because without discipline uh, we will not have freedom. There is a misunderstanding that discipline takes away the freedom, but it actually only a disciplined person can have freedom. Uh, driving on the highway, if we follow the discipline, then you are uh, necessarily free, you will be able to enjoy, you will reach your goal, uh, you will enjoy the journey itself. But if you don't follow the discipline, then of course there is a chance of getting in trouble. Uh, we may get a ticket, police may stop us, or we may have accident. So discipline was to help you avoid all those obstacles. So even in life, when we are talking about discipline, it is not to constrain uh, your freedom, but to help you to keep your freedom. Uh, freedom, uh, in other words, to define when we have too many desires, we are already a slave of desire. Uh, I do not know how we can call ourselves free when we have made a prisoner of our own desires. So sometimes we don't even know the, the definition of freedom. So I think that the whole purpose of spirituality is to give man his basic right, his privilege, and his privilege is to be free, to love, to enjoy, to help others because others are also part of himself. So everything we are talking about here is for your good. There is nobody else we are worried about and each one have to pay attention also as a responsible person to make best of what is given to us. You always have a freedom to believe or not believe. One cannot be forced, as I say, about this thing because God gives us that freedom. God never takes away our freedom, but He has made laws in such a way that if we don't follow the laws, we might lose our own freedom. And uh, these are some of the definitions of the words in spirituality that we should try to understand because if you know, a man is supposed to know. Animals cannot understand. They don't have the intelligence we are supposed to have. If we have the knowledge, we will make good use of it in our own interest. And when you are happy, you are going to make others happy. A person who is not happy cannot make others happy. If a person, doctor, if he is sick, he cannot help the other people who are sick. So our interest is that if we are happy, we'll make others happy. And this is really the fundamental thing. That is why God wants us that each one of us be healthy, happy, so that you can spread the happiness and joy. But we sometimes uh, worry about others, and in so doing, we become unhappy. Then we are becoming not only burden to ourselves, but also to others. So it is very important that we all understand the principles on which the whole universe of God has uh, structured. If we understand his principles, we will uh, have much better life if we try to make our own rules. Certainly he has even given us that freedom. We can always make our choice, but the wise choice would be to have minimum of obstructions and maximum of l joy or love and peace in life. If that is what we want, fine. If we still do not believe in it, then we will also learn this sooner or later that this is what we were looking for, but maybe we took little detour. Even there, there is, God is no harm. We, we may try what we want. We may not believe what he says, but we will believe through experience that this is not what I wanted. So that is why the wise people and parents are trying to teach children so that they will suffer less. But children do not know, and so they think that parents are trying to constrain them. Rather, we give you wisdom so that you will stay free. The real wisdom is to stay free from our desires, because desires really control us and make us slave. The more desires you have, more things you want, more you will have to earn. And in earning, you are necessarily uh, a slave of the job, because normally we get bored. Very soon, when we have to work, no matter how beautiful a job, as I have mentioned, even young people out of college are getting bored. Amazingly, they haven't even started the life, and they are bored. Something is wrong in our system. We should be enjoying our job, uh, and that very enjoyment is our worship. If we are selling cars, if we are uh, working for somebody, we are in the factory, everything is a worship. The whole universe is a temple. Unfortunately, out of ignorance, we make specific places for temple. 
we don't do anything good there either and what beautiful temple god has created for us the whole universe is a temple every place is a temple your working place is a temple even bathroom is a temple if you keep it clean and neat so then if we can understand this principle then we will save so much time in not running around to different places to find god while god was always with us so some of these principles if we understand then we will enjoy life as we go rather than we hope there after 20 years i save money i will retire and then enjoy while we lost our young age and the joy of working joy of uh, being with people our families our relatives our associates we always think of future and uh, not enjoy the present life so another principle of spirituality is that you are the temple of god god is within us everybody is temple of god the whole universe is a temple of god every garden every flower every tree is a temple if we can treat then oh, the whole world as such then not only we won't ruin them not only we won't misuse them not only we will be uh, selfishly doing things to hurt ourselves like we ruin our environment Uh, a big issue nowadays is that um, out of ignorance we have created our own problem the comforts make us slave so uh, some of these definitions that we need to learn and then think about it meditate on it and of course we we'll have to have faith and if you don't have the faith try it out and see from your own experience i think that we have been misguided lot by not only the dharma gurus or our uh, teachers who don't even know what they are teaching so we have to necessarily go to the saints our uh, genuine scriptures and above all trust on uh, god within us who is certainly going to guide us uh, if we find that we are not finding the right education and in this world necessarily the maya is made such a way that unless you watch out for yourself nobody else is going to watch out for you if you are going to buy a car you want to know what car you want to buy as i say the type of car the amount of money you can afford uh, the salesman you should know so same way the life itself is that you want to have peace but you should know where to go for peace what price you have to pay to whom to go for peace who will guide you right whether you have got it right all these things are not very simple and that is why we need a proper education faith love and above all our freedom to learn these are the things god has no objection if we feel like that we want to experiment we are not trying to say that uh, you have to do it against your will we are simply saying that this is the experience of wise people if you have good sanskar and you believe and you do is fine if you don't see we still should love each other and let everybody do what they want to do after having been told having been uh, lovingly guided uh, we should still not have the right to take away somebody's right not to do what they want to do this is the real freedom and yet uh, in the name of freedom we really take away others freedom we say when well, i tell my son to do this because he will be happy but actually we are taking away his happiness by bombarding on him without understanding his aspirations his his condition his understanding so the wisdom of spirituality takes into account individual's aspiration his background uh, but one thing we want to remember that every person no matter what is capability or incapability according to our own values every person has god within him and we must give him full opportunity some of the saints were, did not even go to school and yet we worship them we don't know if jesus christ went to uh, berkeley or stanford or um, mit we don't know if mirabai went to uh, um, uh, university of california and los angeles and yet today we are worshiping them we have put so much of false value in education that the whole makeup is wealth that anything that brings wealth causes success and unfortunately that is not so so i think that we need to be retrained in the values in life that what is important and again as we said important thing is are we happy are we peaceful are we joyous are we free from anxiety 
the, these are the values you know, if these are the values we can get from the college or from the house so far so good but hardly we learn this thing in the school as a matter of fact in the universities we are taught to be inferior or superior i am better than other somebody i got better grades i am smarter than others this pride that is built in us is actually against educate purpose of education so sometimes we have to say that we may have to erase your education because you have been misguided by creating more pride in you because you have a higher degree than somebody or you went to a certain school and these are the things that we don't think because everybody wants their own they have their own purpose to grind so i would say that spirituality alone gives you impartial concern and your uh, good uh, which is what we are trying to achieve in this life so try to understand where your good is uh, this is what we have been talking about we want to lead you into a proper education so that you will be free to guide yourself so i would say that uh, this was the purpose of the four ashrams that we have been talking about next i think i would like to only mention in the passing before we enter into the scripture and what lord himself and the, has to say we'll be talking about gita where it came from what is the purpose and all but before that i would like to mention that three things we need to know who is man or what is the nature of man who is god and what is creation if we can understand little bit of all these three things then we'll be able to tie ourselves and uh, understand our own um, greatness that god has built in us i would say first to talk about man man is not what he looks like he is not merely a piece of flesh or two eyes and a nose and uh, two legs and a creature that he looks man is much more than that if it is like a diamond box in which diamond is wrapped up in many many layers and a beautiful box and if we give that box to a child he will think that the box is everything he doesn't know what is what it contains but he is attracted more by the box because it is beautifully wrapped similarly god within us that diamond is beautifully wrapped but we like, like children and we simply play with the box never trying to go inside what is what god has kept for us and that is the beauty so man should be looked upon not merely as a box or a body but he is much more than that he has as we say if we can take an example of an onion onion has several layers and way inside is the seed from which the whole onion has come similarly man has several layers that we should recognize or s- several aspects of a human being so man outwardly is a flesh and bone and whatever he looks like skin hair and all that but that even animals have it as we go inside him we we come to another cover which we call pranamay kosh the first is annamay kosh means it is built out of food our body responds to food so we call it an annamay kosh or a cover that is made out of food that is the body itself then the second cover that inside we have or the second layer is a pranamay kosh or the energy that we get from the oxygen that we get from the air as we go deeper there is a third layer we call mental manomay kosh or a mental uh, covering over the uh, inside seed that we have and the, we will be talking about each uh, covering very di- di- uh, distinctly so that we can use them properly to unfold ourselves towards our realization the next cover that is inside is intellectual or what we call vivek kosh where we have to know what is right and wrong we often think what we what is right turns out to be wrong sometimes what we think is wrong may be turn out good in life we do not really know what is right and wrong so intellect is given to us that is another shield then there is an anandamay kosh where we are blissful but we are blissful because we are sleeping sometimes in sleep we are very blissful but that is still a temporary thing and the final then the seed is god himself what we call sat chit and anand so sat chit and anand is we who are really god 
we are then covered by these layers as i said 1 2 3 4 and 5 these covers has to be uncovered that means we have to should go deep into each person's makeup that is not only flesh but he is also pran he is also intellect he is also mind he is also a blissful person and above all he is god and how do we unfold well that will be the purpose of our uh, scriptural studies in future that we will be helping how to look at each cover and don't think of man only as a physical pleasure or a beauty but there is much more beauty in him like a diamond if we simply penetrate into the man we don't ever look at the heart of a person we look at the face only and we judge people only outwardly but we don't judge what a beautiful thing he has inside no matter how ugly or good he may look outside because outside is all temporary so man then consists more than what he looks then of course about god we will be talking lot god has several forms several names uh, one of the biggest problem is that we don't know god we don't know how to describe him we don't know his forms and the greatest problem we have created today in life is due to not knowing who god is we all say god is one but each one says it is my god who is one and thus again we create problem as we know in 911 we we have the problem of this destruction and this friction we create among people unfortunately it has come from poor training in religion and understanding of god so we will know more about god his forms and he is one but uh, he can have many forms he can have different names but he is one like the sun is one the ocean is one yet we give different names to the same sheet of water similarly god he is necessarily one but we give different names we should not insist on our god because god is only one so it is not my god your god it is simply god so if we will get the better training then we will have much less friction among hindus muslim christians or any other or even those who don't believe in god does not matter there is never a reason to be uh, in friction or anger or jealousy or hatred that we see today in the world that creates uncertainty anxiety and destruction all because we have not been taught properly what religion is what god is who we are and what is this creation uh, my purpose is to point out this thing that we must learn what man is all about who we are how much more we are than what we think well, who is god where is he what is his form how do i know he is god and how do i trust and all this thing we will be able to experience all this thing too ourselves we don't take anything by word or blind faith i don't want you to be superfluous or superstitious or don't believe in magics i want you to trust your conscience your own experience and the experience of the sages uh, we want don't want to take you on a false ride you will have to work hard it is uh, we don't want to give you false promises also uh, that you can buy god or you can buy peace or joy you have to pay the price and the price is discipline that we can all have it doesn't require money it doesn't require any high education god has given us built in desire faith uh, that we want to head towards this thing so i would say that let us learn about who the man is and i when i say man i don't mean man i mean man or a female it is one and the same so we should know ourselves we should know god and we should also know the creation Uh, that is made out of five elements the sky the air the sun the water the earth again we are talking about environment out of which we are made our body is made out of these five elements every body is made out of these five elements if we understand all these thing then we will not be seeking the differences but rather we will learn in harmony and it is the unity and harmony that what we are looking for that alone is going to give us peace ओम शांति 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 हरिओम तत्सत